Let us turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 6, verses 46 to 49. Luke chapter 6, verses 46 to 49. It reads, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without the foundation. The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. Uh, the title of today's message is, What Does My Action Prove? Um, but it, seemed like, it seems like Jesus is talking about uh, putting the words into practice. Yes, he is, uh, but that's not the the main point that he was trying to say. What he was trying to say is that he was the master, but people call him that he is the master and Lord, but they don't do that. They don't they don't do as the as Lord and the master had said. So that's the key point. That's the point that Jesus was pointing it out. You know, you call me Lord and Lord, but why don't you do as I say? But if you put the words, if you hear my words and put them into practice, oh, you're, you're like a man who's building a house on, on the foundation, on the rock, putting the foundation on the rock. So, so many people, I, I don't want to say misinterpreted, but to a certain extent, they are misinterpreting and saying, see, that's why you got to put them into practice. So the point of Jesus was not, not, the, not for the sake of putting the words into practice. By doing that, you know, you're, you're proving yourself that you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Master. People come to church, they hear, but they don't put them into practice. Why? Why? Because Jesus Christ is not their Master. And that's what Jesus is pointing it out. But... So many people disregard that and saying, see, you got to put into a practice, so let's do it. So, the, so they focused on putting into, putting, the, so they, their focus was, the fo their focus is on, on the actions. So did you do it or did you not do it? So Jesus is talking to the disciples and, and saying, see, you, you got to understand this. I am your master. I am the Lord. So we need to understand in terms of actions and in terms of uh, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ being our Lord and Master. So that is, in fact, what Jesus is talking about. I am the Lord. I am the Master. You know, you, you, you see, it seems like you're recognizing me as your Lord and Master, but, but you're not, you know. And Jesus himself clearly states and saying, why do you call me Lord and Lord, 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 and do not do what I say? We come to church, we listen to the word, we read the Bible, we know exactly what it is that we need to do most of the time. But we don't do it. You know, why? Uh, of course, he is saying that you got to put them into a practice. But, but you, can't, you can't put those into practice because you don't have me as, as, as your master. We hear it, oftentimes we hear the word and, you know, we... We take it very lightly. You know, we don't even consider put them, putting, putting them into practice. Why? Because he's not our master. Now, we talked about Jesus Christ being our master, right? So he is our master. That's why. Um, because Jesus is the Christ, he is our master, regardless. Whether you like it or not, whether you recognize it or not, Jesus is our master because he is the Christ. He's the one who died for our sins. He's the only, he's the only one who, who had delivered us from the hands of, the, hands of the Satan's. You know, from, from the power of sin, power of hell, power of Satan, power of, 
you know, uh, uh, the unbelief, only Jesus Christ can deliver us from that. For that matter, he is our master. Right? Um, uh, Satan used to be our master. But because ever since God had promised the promise of Messiah, and whoever was holding on to that promise, God becomes their master. Yeah. And looking at these Pharisees, they've been waiting for the Christ, but Christ wasn't their master. Think about it. John chapter 1, verse 11, like I said, that's one of the saddest scripture verses of the whole scripture, whole Bible. You know, Jesus came to which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Why? Because they didn't consider Jesus as their, as their master. You know, they've been waiting for it, but Jesus Christ was not their master, so they rejected him. You know, people come to church, they think, well, let's do this. So people come into church, people, people do all sorts of things. They come to church, they come to worship, they sing praises, they give offerings, they pray, they read the Bible, listen to the message, they have forums and fellowships. But the Christ is not their master. You know? And that's, that's the thing that Jesus is pointing it out. Not only he is our master because he is the Christ, he is the master of our prayer topics. So what are your prayer topics? Our prayer topics must come from the uh, heavenly mandate. What it is, it's all about what it is that God wants. You know? uh, God wanted to carry out what he wanted to do, so he called you. That should be our prayer topics. Have you recognized that? You know? uh, the heavenly mandate, callings, and the missions. You know? Understanding that, then you can understand that Christ is our master of the prayer topics. He's also the master of the method. That's why it is, it is important, as you and I get to understand the Bible, we get to understand the very, the, the natural things that we need to do, the rightful things that we need to do, the ine inevitable things that we need to do. Without understanding the scripture correctly, it's hard for us to see it. So the method that we take is always off. When we, we need to understand what it is that, is, what it is that we have to do. The rightful things, inevitable things, the natural things that we need to do. Christ is also the life of, the, the master of our lives. You know, For that matter, what do we need to do? One heart, whole heart, and continuation. And as we, as we get to live our Christian lives, as we do things for the sake of the kingdom of God, it's got to be one heart and whole heart and continuation. You know, if you have one heart and whole heart, whole heart you have no choice but to continue. And that's the kind of life that you and I are supposed to live. Why? Because he is the master of our lives. He's also the master of answer to our prayers. For that matter, we understand what only means and what uniqueness means. You know, and the recreation means. And he is, he is the master of, 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 of answers, answers our prayers. So whatever, whatever the answers that you and I receive, you know, it has the, the value of only the uniqueness and the recreation. Something that the world cannot reproduce. Why? Because only God can give you that. Christ is also the master of, of our time. So the 24 hours, it all belongs to Christ. <laughs> Not a second of it belongs to us. Not a second of it belongs to anybody else, but whole everything belongs to Christ. So how you how you spend 24 hours 20, 24 hours a day is very very important, you know, meditating, praying, enjoying Emmanuel. You know, of course, as you work, as you study, you know, as have fellowship and all the things that you do, you know, there's got to be Christ in your life. Why? Because He is the master of our lives. Only when you understand that. The 24 hours belong to Christ, then the 25 hours begin to take place. Something that the world cannot comprehend will take place in your life. You know, people say, I don't have time, but I'm telling you, if you understand, if you understand that the Christ is the master of the time, we don't lack anything. You know. So don't you ever say that I don't have time. I'm telling you, God will make it. God will make times for you and I. 
So we've got to simply recognize that the time belongs to Christ. He's the master of our time. And I always thought that I didn't have enough time to sleep <laughs> as I was growing up. So I maintain average eight hours, uh, eight hours sleep per day, you know, even when I was in college. You know, people say, well, I'm going to sleep five hours and four hours. And I was talking to a, a first, year, first year of my college. I went to Knox College, which was in Illinois, Galesburg, Illinois. I attended for one year, and then I transferred out to uh, Wheaton. Um, the first uh, final week, you know, I'm sitting down and talking to the, uh, my sweet mate and, and other people. They're like, oh, I slept only uh, five hours. You know, I was like, man, five hours, you know? Um, and and, and, and I, I find out not five hours per day. They were only step five hours throughout that week. <laughs> I was like, you must be crazy. <laughs> You know, I need to sleep even during the final final days. You know, I I, I slept, I averaged seven eight hours, seven eight hours of sleep. I had to, you know. Uh, I I thought I always needed more time to sleep. Then I became a pastor, assistant pastor. You know, they tell me to come to early prayer meeting. I said, you gotta be kidding me, <laughs> right? Um, I would sleep twelve and one in the morning, sometimes two. I had to get up at five. Impossible. You know. So every Sunday that I go to early prayer meeting, the whole that whole Sunday was just it was a disaster for me. I couldn't, it was very difficult for me to stay awake. You know? So I kind of understand, I'm very understanding um, as I see the uh, the assistant pastors who are not able to make early prayer meetings. You know, why? Because I, I know, you know, they need they need more sleep. And I always thought I need more time. And as I begin to understand the Bible, the gospel more and more, I begin to realize, wow, you know, it's not about the time. It's, it's all about how I understand what my time is. And all the 24 hours belong to Christ. 25 belongs to Christ. So eternity belongs only to Christ. And I begin to realize that. So... And if you keep on saying, well, I don't have time, you know, I, I need more time, you got to recognize that time belongs to Christ, you know, and spend more time meditating on the Lord. So I, liked, I like what uh, Bill Heibel said. He said, I, I'm, I'm too busy not to pray. People say, I'm too busy to pray, and I'm too busy to do anything. And he says, I'm too busy not to pray. And because I'm so busy, I have to pray. The prayer is the essential part of our lives. Without prayer, you can't do anything. And that's what Bill Hybel understood. And that's exactly what the Bible is telling us. You know, Jesus had amazing ministry from early morning to all to, 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 till night. You know, Jesus Christ, he, all day long, every single day, he had amazing works, ministry. You know, but look at him in the morning, at night. Any, t any chance that he had, you know, he went to solitude, solitary place and pray. He prayed to the Lord. Why? Because he knew, because he understood the time belongs to him. And Christ is also the master of our future. For that matter, we need to imprint the correct things. We need to imprint the covenant. We need to imprint the thoughts of God within our hearts. What are you being imprinted? The things that belong to the world or the things that belong to God? The perishable things or the imperishable things? You know, are you being imprinted with God's word? Or, or are you being imprinted with the things that belong to the world? So many people talk about the worldly method. You know, are you being imprinted by that? People talk about how to become successful. You know, and if there's no God, if there's no word, you got you to gotta really think about it. Christ is the master of our future. So the imprinting and putting uh, roots down and changing our nature, it all belongs to Christ. So everything begins with recognizing Christ being the master of our lives. You know? And I'm, I'm sure Jesus got sick of hearing this. Lord and Lord. People come and, 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 and tell him, Lord, my Lord and my master. 
the way Jesus is. They don't do the things that Jesus wanted them to do. People come and hear, but, but they don't put them into practice. You know. uh, we come to church. We came to church today, right? And we're listening to the word. You got to understand it. You got to meditate. You know, what is that Lord wants? You know, whatever the Lord has spoken to you, you got to put them into practice. Proving that he is our master. That's why the title of today's message is, What Does My Action Prove? It proves that Jesus Christ is our master. You know? So after, upon hearing the word, let's put them into practice. Now, that's why he says in verse 46, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? I will show you what he's like, who comes to me and hears my words and, put, and puts them into practice. And it says in verse 48, he's, he's like a man building a house. So it gives an example. And parable and saying he's, he's like a man building a house and who dug, down, who, dug, who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. And when that happens, now, it's, you got to understand it. What, what does that mean? You hear it and you put them into practice, right? And he's like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck. The problem comes. Difficulties come. So, there's so many problems, right? But if you hear the word and put them into practice and realize what? The power of the word. The power of practice. Now you understand the working of the Holy Spirit. You know? And along with that, problems come. Difficulties come. The flood and torrent struck. What happens? When a flood came, the torrent struck that house, but could not shake it. Couldn't shake it. There's going to be so many torrents and so many floods coming into your life, but those things cannot and will not shake you. Why? Because you understand the powerful working of the Holy Spirit. Because you're... You're firmly holding on to the word of God. Because now you have the mystery and the power of prayer. It cannot shake you. That's why Jesus says, hear it and put them into practice. And recognize that I am your master. So the whole focus here is not, it's not about hearing and then put, put, putting them into practice. After hearing and putting, in, putting them into practice... Recognizing that Jesus Christ is our master. That's the whole point. Along the way, so many people, without recognizing that Jesus, without recognize, recognizing Jesus being the Christ, what do they do? They try to put them into practice. Let's do this. We're Christians. Let's God help out the need. Let's do that. So they talk about all the things that they, that they need to do. And they fail to recognize that Jesus is their master. And Lord. And Jesus says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and, and never do what I say? So, understanding on what it is that Christ is telling us is very important. Putting them into practice, of course, very, very important. But after putting them into practice, what, sh what should you and I recognize? That He is our only Master. He's the master. You know, he's our Lord. And that's what we need to recognize. Having, having done all the things that the Lord Jesus is telling us to do and fail to recognize that Jesus is the Christ. Looking at the Pharisees. Looking at all these people. Now, let me continue reading it. When the flood came, the torrent struck that house but could not shake it. Because it was well built. Because well built. It was imprinted well. You know, because it was being imprinted. It's, it's putting roots down. Now it, it has changed your nature. So you are not shaken. Whatever the things that you hear. Now you're not shaken. Before you used to. You used to shake like crazy. <laughs> Someone. A, a light wind blows. And you're shaking like crazy. And now. You don't shake anymore. Why? Because you have putting the roots down. Now your nature has changed. You hear unbeliefs. Well, it, it doesn't shake you. you know? 
the, the, the worries and anxiety continuously come, but those things cannot shake you. Why? Because you built the house on the rock. Isn't that amazing? Now you understand that Jesus is the Christ. So you don't have to worry about it. Why? Because it is the Christ who needs to take care of the problems that you face. That's understanding Jesus Christ being our master. I don't have to worry about I don't have to take care of the problems that I face. It is the Christ who needs to take care of it. And you know what? He already had taken care of all the problems on the cross. So that's the, that's the covenant that we need to hold on to. Right. Um, the verse 49, But the one who hears my words and does not, put, does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. You built a house without foundation. That's crazy. You, know? you built a three, four, five-story buildings and there's no foundation. Yeah. Would you like to buy those kind of buildings or houses and live in it? Well, you wouldn't want to, you know, unless you didn't know, right? And the, the person who hears and never puts them into practice is like those kind of people. Well, you know what? The moment the torrent struck that house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete completely gone you hear it never put them never puts them into practice so what you don't recognize how you don't recognize the word of God anymore you don't understand the power of the word you hear it but you never experience its fulfillment so what happens you'll be like oh, you know same thing all over again well he's not going to answer me anyway it's not going to take place anyway it hasn't been taking place all these years so you give up on it. So problem continuously come. So what Jesus is saying that is by recognizing that the listening, hearing the word of God and putting them into practice is no use. It means you don't have Christ as your master. Why? Because you think you're the ones who need to take care of it. Jesus says, no, no, no. By by hearing the words and putting them into practice, you recognize that I am the Lord and Master of your life. Then you don't have to do anything. I'm the one who's had to, who has to do everything. When the flood comes and torrent struck down, I am the one who needs to guard you. I am going to do what I am going to do. And that's what you and I need to understand. You know, that's the Christian life. That's, it's all about having Jesus Christ as our Lord and Master. For that reason, for you and I to recognize that He is the Lord and Master, all we got to do is just follow, simply follow it. Whatever the Lord has said, just carry it out. Put them into practice and see if what He said is true. Like those Bereans. You know, they heard what Paul had to say and they wanted to find out if those are true. So they meditate on it every single day. That's all you and I need to do. <laughs> Meditate. Lord, are you true? Are you serious about this? You know, show me, prove me, and meditate on it every single day until you experience. Once you experience, then you will know that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Master of your life. You know? And without, without being confirming that, without having these kind of assurances, I'm telling you, you'll be constantly shaking. You know? People, so many people do not have the assurance of salvation. So many people do not have the assurance of answer to prayer, the guidance, you know, the, the victory, the forgiveness. People don't have that. Why? Because they've never put them into practice. They've never experienced the word of God. When the filling of the Holy Spirit, the working of the Holy Spirit take place in your and my life, I'm telling you, we'll begin to see. We'll begin to recognize, oh, wow. He is the master. He's the only master in my life. All right. Who's your master now? What governs your thoughts? What controls your mind? What controls your decisions? What to do and what not to do? Who is controlling you? Or what is controlling you? We got to think about these things. We say, Lord, Lord, you are master of my time. We're the ones who are controlling our times. We decide when to get up. We decide what to do and what not to do. We decide on 
how we're going to spend our time, you know. The master of whatever thing that we're, the master of the money. We decide how to spend, what to spend on, you know. Christ is master of everything. Sunday, we decide how we're going to spend Sunday. We come to churches, Lord, you are my Lord and Master. And Lord says, Jesus says, no, no, why do you keep on calling me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you to do? What is the Lord telling us to do on Sundays? You know, what about evangelism? What about missions? What about enjoying Emmanuel? You know, what is, what is it telling us? We hear it so many times. But you know what? Sometimes we became, we became numb. You know, we hear that, oh, okay, whatever. You know, the Lord is keep on telling us, but we're not hearing it. We hear it, but we're not hearing it. And that's how, that's how great ability we have. You know, we're so amazing to certain things. The Lord keeps on, Lord keeps on telling us, we keep on ignoring it. You know, what does, what does my action prove? You know, think about um, Luke chapter 6, 6 through 7. Let's look at Luke chapter 6, verse 6 through 7. They're talking about the, the Son of Man being the Lord of the Sabbath, right? And verse 6 says, on, on another Sunday, he went into the synagogue and was teaching. And a man, man was there whose right hand was, was, was shrivel, shriveled. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. They came not to hear the word, but they came to, to accuse Jesus. People hear what Jesus had to say, but the Pharisees, as they're listening to what Jesus had to say, they're looking for reasons to accuse him. Why? Because Jesus was not their master. You know, people come to hear about, to hear about what Jesus had to say, but not to hear it and but putting into an, uh, put into practice, but to accuse him. Luke chapter 5, verse 30, Jesus calls uh, the tax collector, the Levi, right? So he was so happy that Jesus Christ, Jesus called him. So he, he, he opened up the party for him. He called up so many different friends. Now Jesus was there eating. And chapter 5, verse 30, it's what the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belong to their sect complained to his disciples, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And what did Jesus say? Um, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. The Pharisees, they didn't want to hear it. They heard it, they didn't want to hear it. You know, they didn't want to follow that. They didn't want to follow what Jesus had to say. And that's why the Pharisees had no choice but to destroy it. When the time of judgment came, when the flood and, and, and the torrent struck, their house was completely swept out, you know, completely demolished, destroyed. And chapter 5, uh, verse 33 continues, right? And they're saying, well, I see John's disciples, and they fast, they pray. <laughs> and the disciples of Pharisees pray and, and they fast as well. But about, what about your disciples? All they do is they eat. <laughs> and they complain. Now, people who come to church and complain, constant, constantly complaining, you got to really uh, look, at, look at yourself. You, know? you need to really go home and, 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 and think about what it is that the Lord is trying to tell you. What do you see? We all see the same thing, but why do you interpret it so differently? You know, there may be problems, there may, there may be lacking, there may be weaknesses. You know, on those areas, we need Christ. Church need Christ. Simply, we need to simply recognize that Christ is the master of our lives, and that Christ is going to fill it. You know, but if you keep keep on complaining, it instead of Christ being filled. Instead of Christ filling those, the, the empty spots, it is the evil spirit. It is the darkness, the forces of darkness that is going to fill up that, the, the, those empty, empty spaces, empty places. So we need to really recognize these things correctly. 
and think through it. You know, instead of complaining, in, in, instead of uh, grumbling, we need to confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Master, not only of us, but of this church. Christ is the head of the church. Without understanding what it is that Christ is telling us, we have no choice but to be the slave to Satan, slave to sin, and slave to complaints, a slave to disbelief. You know. But if we recognize Jesus being the Christ, be Jesus being the master of our lives, instead of crumbling, I'm telling you, we will be praying. And think about it. Luke chapter verse four. Luke chapter four verse. Uh, 28 to 29. They try to kill Jesus. Luke chapter 4. Uh, Jesus drives out an evil spirit. And these people seeing that, what do they do? You know, they try to, they try to kill Jesus. And 28 to 29. Oh, no, no. Actually, after Jesus said, quoted on Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Upon hearing that, they got so upset. Because Jesus says, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, has been accomplished right now before your eyes. And they're like, what is he talking about? You know, they heard it, never understood it. And what did they do? They tried to kill him, verse 28. It says, all the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town, and took him to the, to the, the, the brow of, of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him down the cliff. <laughs> they tried to throw him off from the cliff. And of course, you know, he walked right through the crowd and went on his own way. Of course, they were not able to do it. So many people try to uh, plan different things. The plans against uh, the will of God. Uh, it's, they're, that's, it's not, they're, they're, it, they're not going to be successful. You know, why? Because Christ, God is in control. We need, to under, we need to continuously recognize that Jesus is the Christ and the Lord and Master of our lives. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has set me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the ear of the Lord's favor. Um, for you and I to have Christ, Jesus Christ as our Lord and Master means we understanding that means we have understood uh, Luke chapter 4, 18. You know? Now you and I have found the purpose of our lives. Evangelism and missions, saving souls, you know, being, uh, being able to release these oppressed. There's so many blind people who are helping them to see. There are so many people who are being oppressed and captives. We're setting them free. You know? And this is this, these are things what you and I have to do. This is exactly what Lord wants us to do. Right? But if you, if you and I recognize, upon hearing what Jesus had, what, what Jesus had to say, putting them into practice will help us to come to a conclusion that Jesus is the Lord and Master. And that's what, what he's trying to get at. You know, um, but so many people, especially the Pharisees and Sadducees and all the teachers of the law, they've omitted the part of Christ being the master, God being their master. They're simply focusing on putting them into an action. So did you do it? Did you not do it? If you haven't done it, let's do it today. Oh, did you do it? Great. Thumbs up. <laughs> and they completely forgot about who is in control. Christ is here. Christ had accomplished everything. He is the Lord and Master of everything. Let us not let us not be like Pharisees. Right? No matter no matter what what people say, no matter what the world says, 
Jesus is the Lord and Master. John chapter 1 verse 11 is talking about the non-believers. Uh, Jesus came to which was his own. His own did not receive him, rejected him. So John chapter 1 verse 12, it says, Yet to those who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ, that he is the Lord and Master of our lives, we become saved. And after we are saved, you know what happened? The sanctification comes in. God called us to be righteous, justification. Then now the sanctification must kick in. Whatever Jesus says, we must hear it and put puts them into practice. Then you and I will be recognized while wow, he is truly the master of our lives. You know, then we'll get to entrust and surrender our lives more and more, regardless of the situation. You know, we see our lackings, we see our limitations, but holding on to our limitations and lackings, we come to Jesus. And we experience, we continuously experience that he takes care of our problems. So if we understand the salvation correctly, I'm telling you, we'll get to obey. We, we, we'll get to uh, put, the, put the words into practice. You know, Jesus understood what the salvation is all about. He understood correctly, 100%, fully. Yeah. So every decision that he made was based on accomplishing the salvation. Not by, not, 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 a, not by my will, you know, but according to what you will, Lord. And that's who Jesus Christ was. He obeyed, he obeyed the word of God until death. And if we understand, that's why it's very important for you and I to understand the salvation correctly. You know, there are so many people who, who are not aware of what salvation is all about. They're so confused about justification and sanctifications. That's why we need to go and teach them. That's why 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 17 clearly states, you know, the scripture is God breathed. So teach them, rebuke them, correct them. With what? With God's word. Not with your own words, not with your own thoughts, not with your experience, but with God's word. Correct them. Only through the word of God we can be corrected and we can become whole. That's why Jesus himself came. The whole, only the Bible is talking about the gospel. Can a blind man lead another blind man? No. You need the gospel. You need Christ. You know? If you and I experience that Jesus is the master, Lord and master of our lives, oh, then we can lead the blind man. Why? Because we're not blind. We're not blind anymore. Through the because of the because of the gospel, now we're open. Now our eyes are open. You know, we once were oppressed, now we're released. We once were captives, now we're set free. So what are we telling them? We're telling them about the freedom. We're telling them about the Christ, who can open their spiritual eyes and physical eyes as well. Now we can talk to them about Christ, who can release them from the oppression. Whatever thing, whatever thing that is that is oppressing you, you know, uh, ruling over you. You need to recognize that you need Christ. Recognize, simply recognize that Christ has taken care of everything. Now, if you don't hear the word of God and don't put them into practice, that you cannot experience the word of God, then you cannot have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Master. So it's, it seems like it seems like um, Jesus is talking about um, the actions, but yes, it is. He he was. He is. He's talking about putting putting things into actions. But by doing that, he's saying that we need to recognize that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Master. That's the key. And I can see many people putting putting the words into actions. And I see some people doing that to that, to that degree, to, to that extent. But and I say that many people fail to recognize that Jesus being the, the Lord and Master in their lives. That's the whole point. right? And as you guys study, you need to recognize that Jesus Christ is the Master of your life. 
As you're working, you need to recognize that Jesus Christ is the master of your life. You know, as you work, as you study, as you do anything, he's the Lord and master of your life. We need to continuously recognize that. Thinking about the first service message, it continues to uh, today's passage. Right? Uh, without understanding the gospel, and if you understand religion, if you understand, if you're holding on to whatever that is not the gospel, I'm telling you, you cannot do anything. Why? Because that's not what God wants. Studying hard? Of course, you need to study hard, guys. Please. Even though I didn't study hard when I was, in, when I was a student. You know, because I didn't know that. Now you guys know the gospel. Now you guys know the reasons you need to study hard. But studying hard is not the key point. And as you study, you need to find out, wow, Christ is the master of this academia. Without, if you do not recognize that studying becomes meaningless, you need to work hard, right? In every aspect of your life, you got you to gotta give your best. But as you're doing that, you need to recognize that Christ is master of my life, prayer topic, method, and, and answers, time, and future. Christ is the master of everything. Why? Because he's the creator. <laughs> he is the creator. And throughout this week, I hope that all of you guys will simply recognize that and, and enjoy uh, Christ being the, the master and Lord in your life. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for today. Thank you for saving us through Jesus Christ. We used to have different master, Lord. But thank you. Thank you for sending Christ for us so that we can have a good master, the master who cares for our, for our lives, the master who cares for our well-being. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, help us to continuously experience your mercy and your goodness and your kindness, Lord. May, may we continuously uh, experience as we, as we hear your word and putting them into practice, Lord. And every single day, help us to recognize on all the things that we do that you are the master of our lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.